Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Late night, Cappy. Actually had a low in asshole consulting requests. So I was able to actually do some originals. I was like, oh, hey, a break. All right. Are you worried about losing? No, not really. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's enough single mothers and absentee fathers and year-old children coming. There's so many packed up and online and, and down the pipe that uh, uh, asshole consulting will be here till I'm dead. Don't worry. And I'll have to hand on, pass the mantle on to somebody else. And we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about uh, Christian men. And specifically, those of you who wish to date to marry Christian women. And uh, the reason I want to talk about this is because I do actually, and I don't mean to sound arrogant or cocky, especially if you're new to my channel, you don't know about asshole consulting or who is this guy. I know more than most of you Christian men do when it comes to dating Christian women, because I've dated plenty. And as a secularist, as an agnostic son who, and, and who was a preacher son, by the way, so don't think I wasn't ever on your team at one time. But as an outside independent observer and witnessing a buddy of mine, I, I have observations you don't because I'm not in the thick of it. My, uh, I don't want to say thinking, that's, uh, I'm, I'm not limited, like, oh, what does the Bible say? I don't have that limitation. I, could, I have free reigns, uh, no holds bars, to look at a situation and assess it for what it is, secular or not. And so I got a buddy. This is a good guy. This is, you know, where have all the good men going? Well, yeah, yeah, exam, exhibit A. Uh, six figures, highly trained professional, nice guy, highly skilled in things masculine like computer repair cars and all that. Um, owns his own house. You go down the list. But the only thing you can say is that he's, he's uh, balding uh, and he doesn't look like Hugh Jackman, um, but he's, he's definitely in shape and not an ugly individual. So I've watched this guy. I've known this guy for 20 years. And it has been train wreck after train wreck after train. And they get worse watching this guy try to simply find himself a good Christian woman. And we're not, I think he's given up on wife and kids. I think he's just selling, I would just want to date a Christian girl. And his dating experiences are so horrible. I can't tell you what they are because it, this isn't like, oh, and she cheated on him. Well, okay, that's somewhat still on us. These are so bad and so horrific and so unique and so psychotic that you would, you know, I, I, not that you would be able to know who this person is, but many people who know him, he's like, I can't, I might know who I am. And I was like, yeah, you're right, because I've never dated a girl that crazy in my life. Close, but not that crazy. And I keep asking, I said, will you just consider dating a non-Christian girl? No, it wants nothing to do with it, because he immediately runs to the yoke part. The yoke, don't be equally yoked, there's a yoke. It's not eggs. It has to do with cattle and the thing. And the see, don't be yoked. Right there, right there. And I say, what does it say about premarital sex? Well, oh, 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 cafeteria Christian now, are we? Okay, well, if you can pick and choose, may, may I recommend, in addition to the very important one, if I, yeah, maybe we'll have a little bit of premarital sex, may you do away with the unequally yoked. And the reason why is that I know... The Bible says to, I know your religion says to, and I know tradition, even common sense, wisdom, wisdom of the past said, well, if you want to find a quality girl, you get yourself a religious girl. And I'm here to tell you, playing both sides of the fence throughout my life, uh, that that no longer holds true because most, not all, but most Christian women are worse than the secular ones that you will date. And I'm not saying the secular ones are all roses and puppies and unicorns either. But especially as you get older, it is not a good thing if the woman is a Christian because there are ulterior motives the woman has that have nothing to do with Christianity and everything to do with self-service greed, uh, mental disorders even, that makes them bad candidates for dating. So, yeah, in 1940... If little Susie was a Christian, okay, that, 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 now it's a red flag. It's actually a liability, a statistical liability if the woman is a Christian. 
Now, let me explain why. <clears throat> there is a qualifier for this, or a caveat, or an exemption, and that if they're younger, and by younger, you know, 16, 17, 18, let's say 20 and under, because there's this, and this is Christian or not, there's this brief window of time before girls get off into the real world and go to college and are taught feminism and how to hate everything in the world and blah, 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 that they are somewhat idealistic. Traditionally, biologically, they were also of the marrying age for most of human evolution in existence, but today's uh, sociological, political, and economic environment changes that. So you might get one who's still like, yes, innocent, pure, kind, idealistic, uh, not broken, no baggage, not a divorced single mom of seven from eight different fathers. The math works, trust me. Um, <clears throat> it, 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 they're, they're, they're still uh, not jaded. They're still pretty good raw material. Not to besmirch them as raw material commodities. And, and that's when they're like, yeah, okay, they might be more traditional. I, I just want to be a good little Christian stay-at-home wife. All right. The rare few percentage that there are, that's it. As the women get older, and especially if they weren't Christian before and they were introduced, introduced to Christ as it went on, the further and further you get away from that, uh, you know, childlike innocence of 16 to 20, not that you'd marry 16, I'm talking about when we're psychologically uh, speaking uh, ready or in that, that uh, mentality. The further you get away from that, the higher and higher chance that a Christian woman uh, is a psychopath, is mental, is, is hor horrendously damaged goods and a very bad woman to date. And I've seen it with my buddy. Uh, you know, it's not like this is just one anecdote. I also dated many uh, gals who were Christians back in my 30s. Um, and and it, you, you, you look at it, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't care if she's got the check mark next to the big JC uh, believer there. There's a whole bunch of other issues. So, <clears throat> what's happening here? Let me try to explain the, uh, the genesis. <laughs> uh, or the reason of rationale so you can understand why... Yes, traditionally the book may say this. It says, oh, equally yoked and all that. Why you may want to put that one aside? Because I'm arguing that these are dead branches or fake Christians. They are not real Christians. And that good quality women uh, come in all uh, types of beliefs and spiritualities. And maybe your goal is to find a, a quality woman. Maybe I'll get to a final argument using Jesus in your own book against you. Uh <clears throat> When you find gals further and further removed from a younger age who are also Christian, they're going to fall into three type of categories. Uh, and you'll be able to identify them by their actions. Right? The first one is they're going to use Christianity as a weapon or tool to lord over you. Lord. <laughs> You're so punny. Uh, but no, seriously, they will use it as a weapon or tool of control. I dated a lot of gals like this where where there's no kissing until we're engaged. I'm like, what? What? I mean, and I'm agnostic. I was like, yeah, yeah, get thee thine ass out of my house, if saith the clary, and you may go away now. Um, another one, the equally yoked, and we can't do that, but would, you know, tease and that. Uh, and then I know other gals that would use, not only on me, but um, I know another married couple where the husband could never, never come anywhere close to Jesus. It was always, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. I mean, never mind, she's not coming anywhere near close either. It was always, they always got JC. You're always being compared to Christ. And uh, you know what? You're never going to compare to Christ. You'll, you'll fail all the time because he's perfect. According to, but, uh, you know, and thank God, because I, you know, I don't know, Jesus is kind of a boring guy. You know, like a guy with a little bit of vice in sin, X kind of gives you a little bit of flavor. No diamond has no flaw. It's what gives them their color anyway, uh, uh, that secular argument aside. Uh, it, it's an impossible hurdle to make. But by gum, by golly, here comes big titted Molly. They would always say, hey, you see that guy in the cross? You, don't, you failed. You see this book right? You failed. And this constant hurdle no man can ever make of, of becoming the perfect Christian. Um, they would use that to control. Well, yeah, I don't think we can do Oh, no, we can't do Oh, no. And contingent upon you guys having a relationship, oh, my God, you get to feel her boobies? 
uh, you had a comment, da, 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 and then if you weren't going to make J Jesus, well, then you better have come close to St. John. If you didn't come close to St. John, well, I don't know. I, mean, I guess you're not a good Christian. Right? So they use it as this tool, this kind of like how teachers use kids. Like you say, hey, I don't think teachers should be paid that much for working nine months out of year. Well, you hate children. They use the children, they use the religion as a shield to excuse their own controlling and sometimes hypocritical or sometimes evil behavior. Like, here's this girl. She, well, not only were they having sex, which I guess you shouldn't do according to religion, but then she was banging another guy and then, and then she got divorced and all this other stuff. And I'm kind of like, you know, I, I um, oh, but she's Christian. Yeah, you know, fuck that. Who cares? Who cares? What? So what? She's, she's evil. I don't care if she got the JC, the C check mark. That's bad behavior. So that's one of them that they'll do. And they'll do one, one or a combination of these three. Second one, born-again Christians. Honestly, God, I, and I think some of you are aware of their fake nature. Born-again Christians are not real Christians. They're people who have committed an egregious sin or atrocity against somebody else. They got caught, and now they want to feel better about themselves, and Christianity allows this, this, um, this excuse. It allows you not to take ownership or responsibility. Now, I know, I know somewhere in the Bible, somewhere it says that you have to. <clears throat> I understand that. And you truly penitent uh, Christians may uh, believe that. But we're not talking about a real Christian here. We're talking about a born again. The Lord has a plan. Uh, Jesus has a way. Uh, my sins are forgiven. Now, uh, they do something under their own steam, and it's successful. Look what I did. But if it's anything bad, well, you know, I was... How the devil was in, I wasn't, you know, but, you know, then I found Jesus when I was in prison looking at five to ten years. You know, that's when they, and they don't change their ways. They don't change who they are, uh, but they do run, to, oh boy, isn't that Bible great? Isn't this constant forgiveness and the abdication of responsibility, <clears throat> uh, especially throwing your, your future to fatism. It's in the Lord's hands. Well, that you're absolved of all responsibility. Well, you know, the Lord has a plan. That's my favorite, single mothers. Well, the Lord has a plan. What was it for you to spread your legs and have the guy not use a condom and then you ruined one, two, three, four, five kids' lives uh, because you couldn't keep your legs shut? Is that the plan? What, what is the plan? You know, because uh, it's starting to approach Job levels of, of torture and pain for your kids, not you, because you keep getting laid in a government check. But I'm, I'm kind of a little bit worried about your children. The Lord has a plan. So they abuse the religion. They abuse Christianity um, as a born-again Christian. <clears throat> and that's, uh, that's what it is. It's just to continue to forgive uh, their past and continued unacceptable and evil, vile behavior. Uh, the third one, kind of closely related to um, uh, uh, the born-again, is that they have nothing else in life. Absolutely nothing else. And um, your relationship with God or Jesus is certainly very important to you. And that's fine. But you have an earthly kingdom. I know it's all the future kingdom of heaven. I know it's the long game. But you're here. And you know who else is here? Other humans. You know what? They're flawed human beings too. And sometimes those flaws can be endearing and charming. This is what makes us humans. Uh, and if you're a healthy individual, you interact with these other people, you fall in love with these other people, um, a friend, br brotherhood, familial, romantic love, whatever. You, you, this is what the earth is here now for, is to appreciate and experience your, other, your fellow man. Uh, but if you don't have anything else in life because you're an evil person, because you refuse to be selfless and altruistic, I don't mean a, a, a pushover. Okay, I don't mean to be in an easy market taken advantage of, but in order to have a good relationship with someone, you got to value them. And in some cases, if you love them, you value them more than you do yourself. Uh, for you to certainly form a spousal relationship and family, your children you should love more than yourself. Uh, but just good friends, like, man, I'd die for that guy. He's, he's, he's a great guy. Man, I really enjoy his company. And, oh, I, I love my little sister. I love my nephew in there. I love my grandchildren or something like that. <clears throat> If you are so selfish, so egotistical, and sometimes also, you know, you could, again, you could see it here, uh, controlling thievery, a uh, born-again Christian, I'm going to use Jesus to get you to do what I want. If you're just a bad person, uh, you don't have a lot of core to you. You don't have anything else going on in your life. You don't have 
family, friends, loved ones, or other people that willingly want to hang out with you. And so what a lot of people do is they will glom on to religion as their only thing. I'm perfect. I'll tell you one story about I'll tell you a story. Let me, I want to tell you a story now. Uh, I was dating a gal who was born again. I was younger, didn't know any better. She, oh, we couldn't have premarital sex. We couldn't have that, no. And we, well, I don't know, and, da, 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 and I think I, we're like the third date, and it wasn't too far away from this time of year, because I remember Thanksgiving, she invited me, well, will you come over for Thanksgiving? I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, I <laughs> went because there was free food. And, uh, because I, I knew she was lining me up to be like the crying shoulder type. I'm like, eh, well, I'll get the free food. So we're sitting, I'm like about to eat, she's like, well, you can't eat. I'm like, oh gosh, you're going to make me pray? Yep, she made me pray. Dear Jesus, and again, broke a single mom, blah, 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 premarital sex. Didn't follow the rules, but found Jesus after all. And, uh, and, and after a while, I was like, yeah, okay, that's fun, but this isn't going to work out. And I see a bite. Sure enough, I find all month, like, she's banging my buddy. I won't mention who, because they're still running around in the, in the circuit. Uh, but she's banging my buddy. It's like, oh, yeah, dude, she told I had to keep pushing her away. I'm like, what? What do you got that I don't? And actually, he was taller and better looking. That's what he had that I didn't. But the, the, it's amazing how like an extra two feet in height and blue eyes and a, and a chiseled jaw. I don't know why I wouldn't drop this. But that's all it took for her to get rid of. Oh, me? You, Bible, Jesus. Uh, this, oh, well, <laughs> fuck, fuck that Bible. Bible, what Bible? I, I, I'm a, I'm a, well, what are the ones that are crazy in the bed? Not, not, not vegans, not pagans. Oh, they're priestesses. This is what girls, they go become a priestess in this thing because they really have nothing else going on in life. Wicked, wicked. Woo hoo hoo, wicked women. Woo hoo hoo, woo hoo. Giggity, giggity goo. Uh, but you wouldn't know anything about that because all you guys are good Christian boys and never have premarital sex or fornicate, correct? Because I know you don't. You wouldn't dare do that cafeteria Christian thing. <clears throat> uh, so, well, I kind of lost it after the wicked. <laughs> Those are good times. Um, the Waking Gal, and then uh, anyway, whatever the point. What, it was a great story. Um, this gal, no one came close. It, it, it was that's all she had. She completely destroyed and screwed up her life, and all she had was her religion. And she would turn it on and off when she felt like when it benefited it, when it didn't. Uh, and, it, and and no one can get really that because again this this is not a good person this is a hypocrite so what you're going to find on what the the kind of general common thread here among all of them is that older women are not statistically are unlikely to be actually truly good honest penitent Christians as much as they are women who are abusing and using the religion for their own personal sake and goals. It has nothing to do with the nobility of God or Jesus or um, actually believing in the Bible. I mean, that's why they'll, they'll sleep with Steve and, and not with Bob. Well, they'll sleep with Jim but not with Fred. Or, well, here's this pad. Well, yeah, but you sucked eight dicks when you... Oh, well, but I'm different now. I, I, saw, I found the light. I found the light. It was... <laughs> It was a porn star that recently became a priest. I'm like, huh? Wait, what? <laughs> what church are you from? Uh, these women don't believe the religion for a second. They're not Christians. Okay? They're not. Uh, and you could kind of start telling. You know, the, the gal who's a 30, I know not to have premarital sex, but this guy is running into women in their 30s who are still virgins. It's like, okay, lady, you obviously have nothing else but the religion in your life, and you're not going to make any considerations for anyone else in your life. You're incapable of being selfless. It's just the Bible in you. It's just you and JC going to bed tonight. Okay, have fun again. And then, uh, oh, and the Lord, will he has a plan. What, for you to be a spinster at 68 with cats? To, to, to never, never know the touch of a man? <laughs> You try and touch someone. Uh, the the uh, or or the controlling wife, you know, who does not. Here's another passage. Submit to your husband. Is that is that a, or do, does your pastor kind of skip over that one? Because there might be a couple less seats in the pews the next Sunday. There'll be a lot of nasty grams written to him. Uh, 
But my point is, if you want to be uh, <clears throat> literal and you still want to follow the Bible, most Christian women aren't Christian. They're abusing and using. They are secularists who don't believe it for a second and are using it. Now, I'm of the faith and the belief that almost 95% of Christians or all religious people fall under that category. But these are especially weaponized or vile people because they are really abusing it. They really are abusing it for their own personal aims and to control over another guy. So when you are in your 40s or your 30s and you oh, I got to date a Christian girl and you go to the Christian singles group or you go online and say it has to have that C box clicks and you start going out with these girls and they're communist single moms, um, some ex-cons on drugs, bankrupt, need to borrow money, all this other stuff like, whoa, 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 maybe we should be a little bit Catholic here and start looking at good works and good deeds, maybe just a little bit, right? And when you start, it, it, this is, again, you get further, it, older and older, it's basically loser women becoming more and more desperate, so much so, they'll reach, I mean, Sinead O'Connor, look at her. She went so far as to join uh, Islam, and she was a she was a Christian priest beforehand. Okay, some about the last refuge of a charlatan is religion, or maybe it was patriotism. I forget which. You are not dealing with one quality women, and then two real Christians. So, I know you still want to check that Christian box, and oh God, you gotta be a Christian. Why? I know she's still married and she has 15 kids from five different fathers, but she she goes to church. She tells me, tells me. Uh, I know you, you want to adhere to that, but uh, they're not Christian women, so I wouldn't even be bothering dating them. What I would argue is that if you're going to be a cafeteria Christian, which you are because you want to have the premarital sexy poo, why not do something that's going to benefit you? mentally, psychologically, and emotionally, and consider secular girls or non-Christian girls. You know, what? nothing wrong with dating a Jewish girl, nothing wrong with dating an Islamic girl, although they're probably so stringent in their religion they're not even going to consider you. Uh, a secularist. Try a Wiccan. Uh, sure, lease, don't buy. Lease. <laughs> lease. <laughs> there are good quality women across all spiritual faiths or, or absences thereof, agnostics and atheists. Uh, and I think that while you're here and now, and if you're going to be a cafeteria Christian on some things, maybe you should find a gal that actually likes you, has a job, has no debts, doesn't have another man's kids, um, isn't a psychopath, isn't a hypocrite, isn't willing to use and abuse a religion to have power and control over people and to excuse her amoral and, and horrible behavior in the past, to so avoid simply taking ownership and, and, and responsibility. Uh, and if, if you ever like, but I really want to create, okay, you know what? I, I understand you do. But may I make this point? I know the equally yoke thing. I know it was written there in the Bible. Okay, all right. You, 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 you'll have premarital sex, but you know, not the equally yoke thing. All right, fine. Your relationship with God comes above everything else. Right? Do I remember this correctly? Did I have it beaten into me in, in elementary school and Sunday school? I, do I remember that correctly? God's number one. Right? A A Abraham killed Isaac or whatever his kid's name was. Ah, just kidding. Nah, nah, Abraham. I'm just judging. Ah, we we're just joking. Wasn't that funny? Remember that time you almost killed your kid? <laughs> yeah, those are good times. Uh, <laughs> we can laugh about it now because it's been 100 years. Because you used to live 700 years old in those days. Um... What was I going with that one? Uh, oh, you oh, consider marrying or dating. Just consider dating, girl, because your relationship with God is all is is what matters in the afterlife. One of the sadder things you hear a preacher's kid. Oh no, there's not going to be dogs in heaven. You won't see your dog in heaven. Oh, no, you won't. Why would you want to hang out with other people? It's, it's God that matters. God is the number one thing. And people, if they follow the rule of the law, their relationship with God comes before anything else, before anything else, including your spouse, including your kids, including the dog. And if that's the case and you're aiming for the afterlife and it's not one of the Ten Commandments, 
uh, and the Lord forgives, I think he might forgive you for this one, where you go and you date a gal you really like, who really likes you and is a good person with a good heart and a good soul, who may convert to Christianity down the road, or, or certainly doesn't begrudge you participating in Christianity. I think you can have that little flaw in your Christian resume, dating and potentially marrying a gal who's not Christian or a different religion. <clears throat> because it is your personal relationship with Jesus and your own personal belief that is what you're ultimately fighting for with your religion. And that even though there's rules and things scripted in whatever Leviticus, I don't know what it was, uh, that says you really should stick within it. Today's quality and caliber of quote Christian women is so bad, you should probably consider non-Christian women. I really do mean that. It, it, if the girl says she's Christian and she's above 25, mm, certainly above 30, definitely above 35. There's something wrong. That's a bad thing. So I would recommend uh, giving them a shot. Okay, It's not going to hurt you to date them. Not going to hurt you to date them. Ask me to think about converting. But man, if you like the girl and she's a good gal, she's got a job and whatever else... Don't, don't go fishing in that toxic waste dump of single Christian women above 35, all right? You, you, they're not Christian. They're not good people. I mean, maybe there's one, but guys, it, it is a telltale sign. A telltale sign. That's, that's some bad juju you're working with there. So I would open up your, your, uh, your horizons, increase your statistical chances, and for God's sake, make your lives a hell of a lot easier and consider dating non-Christian girls. All right, that's it. Uh, if you didn't know what I do, I run a company called Asshole Consulting. I know it's got a curse word in it, so you Christians may not like it, but if you have other questions and you might want an independent third party that is not uh, not religious, go to assholeconsulting.com, see what we do there, and we'll see you guys later. Toodles.